I'm not quite sure how we're gonna break that. We're gonna break some arborist gear today. What's it called? 10X Tech in 5 8 inch diameter. Yep, we've got an arborist harness and we've got some prusset cords here. And Jeremy Norman sent these to us and we're just gonna pull on stuff to uh, have a little edutainment and hopefully you can learn something along the way. Hopefully this isn't as strong as it looks because the machine only goes up to 50 or 100 kilonewtons depending if we do a two to one. But let's talk about this rope first and get started on that. And then we'll figure out how to break that because it's big and I actually don't know how to do it. Jeremy, if it's only one fed buried. Yep. And then on uh, this one here, again, it's a proper splice with stitching. And this has a double locking brummel. I just made that term up. If I'm incorrect, please yell at Ryan for that one. <laughs> <laughs> he went in and, and brummel usually goes in like this and then out and splice. I, I think he went twice. I went twice. Um, on a lot of gear that has uh, loops uh, spliced into it, you'll see a double locking uh, brummel. Almost like a daisy chain. Yeah, exactly. So I uh, wanted to see how that would work. And then there is a single fid length tail berry with a proper taper done on it. Now, Jeremy sent us pretty much new material here that's only been in a closet for a year for context. And this is 10X Tech because it has two strands for each braid. Per carrier. This is designed for tree work. It's made to splice really easy. It's very supple. It almost feels like Dyneema. Yeah, that's why I was like, I can't break that. And he's like, no, no, it's polyester. <laughs> I think the load cell only goes up to 20? Hmm. Thousand? It has a 50%. Well, I can't pull more than 30,000. Anyways, we'll find out how this goes. So I got 43 kilonewtons before basically our two to one, which is what's going to give me 100 kilonewtons, got sucked up into our hydraulic there. So I'm going to have to reset this as tight as possible before it uh, gets tight. So let's try this again. So we extended this all the way out. I don't think it was this long when you did it. It stretched out probably 16 inches. Yeah, that's a lot more. It's low stretch material, but like by the time it settles, it's polyester. Yeah. So it, it's pretty low stretch. Yep. Okay. Try number two. Success! Let's see how much more throw we have left. Ah, uh, not that much. All right. It did the helix thing. Yeah. It left two strands. And it, feel how melted that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So technically this is one strand, and but two carriers. Yep. Wow, it's so fluffy. And all the tips are melted. It's a little crunchy on the top on all of these. 77 kilonewtons. You know what that is in English? I know the rope is rated for roughly 83 kilonewtons. Okay. We're pretty close because that's about a 10% reduction. And when you splice, you lose. You lose a little. A little bit. It's super good enough. And it broke at the end of the, where the taper would be. Yep. On yours, not his. Yeah, it might be on mine. I don't know. It's pretty close either way. It broke some of the stitching as it started to, to stretch. It tore a few of the stitches. Now let's see if one fed slips or if it breaks like the uh, last sample did. Hold on. I never let go of that button and three seconds later have something break. That's why we always back it off before we walk around the corner. <laughs> that was really loud. So I was out of throw pretty much like that's all that we had left. It looks like we only have one strand. Yeah, here's the second carrier for that one strand. That one broke. There's a lot of heat involved in this. Oh yeah. I mean, you can feel how warm the rope is. Basically one fit was super good enough and you didn't have a locked Brummel. Nope. Yeah. And it was a, a really short taper. I just cut it with a pair of scissors. My taper's up here. This is the section that has no taper. And then it broke. Oh. It broke over on his side. Okay. Okay. Wow. Considering you just cut yours diagonal. Yep. I mean, 85.2. So it started to do something right here. And then I let go there and it was settling and then popped. Dang. That's terrifying that that can happen. I mean, that's that's no small number to be messing with. No, and that's that's roughly two kilonewtons above the stated breaking strength of that rope. Oh, wow. So we hit 100%. Oh, wow. Sure glad I have this thing. 
<laughs> and you're standing where? Behind. <laughs> I'm standing behind, behind a, a shear, uh, <laughs> a cutoff saw, and two pieces of stainless steel. Oh, uh, might be super good enough. <laughs> The next two things we're going to break are these two prussics. So one is well used and one looks really new. We're going to just prussic these around a half inch rope. And if uh, they don't break and the half inch rope does, then we are just going to pull these eye to eye to see if there's any difference between the new one and the used one. It was melting, it was getting hotter and able to like grab more. And it looks like it broke the rope, but not, whoa, 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 feel that. Oh, wow, that's hot. That's really hot. It didn't break it in the knot. It yep. broke it where it was just more or less pinching the shit out of it. Oh yeah, feel the tip, it's completely melted. Or this one, feel yeah. it's it's hard as a rock. Yeah, as if, you, wow, as if you took a um, lighter to it. Yeah. So the first time it slipped was about eight kilonewtons. We could throw an extra wrap in it so it slips less. Yeah. Instead of doing three wraps up here, we could do four. We were really, we were trying to test was this, and I don't know, looks like it's freaking fine. So we wrapped it more. Let's try it again. Oh, it only slipped once. Nice. Whoa, one or two extra wraps? That's cool. So, uh, what's that, 15? About 15 it slipped and then broke at 16.79. Oh, look where it broke. Oh, look at that in the knot. So it got quote unquote full strength out of the rope. I mean, this rope is old and used, um, but you know, it didn't break here. And that's what we wanted to know. It's a little chafed, but it's, it's not it's bad. Still usable technically. Yeah. Should we just do them head to head? Yeah. You break the the sewing, mm -hmm. sewing part. Yep. This side looks to be just fine. Those are the plastic things I moved to the middle. And that is very veteran like. Now for the old one. Let's do it. Oh wow, the used one broke almost half. Yeah, this one did not break at the sonar, it broke farther down. Usually it breaks where like some junction or something is. I mean, it looks pretty well used. Okay, so here's the harness. We are going to start by clipping uh, this part here with the Arbor's Bridge. And this looks super used enough and we're just clipping it right there. That's so cool. Hey, look, I got a pulley out of it. Wow. Look how crappy it looks inside. Yeah, this is... Well used. Doesn't break at this knot, it breaks where the sharpest bend is. Oh, it was going to break. Oh, that is close. 22 is about 10 times stronger than you'll ever need it. Because we tensioned the knots, the part that was not exposed came, came out. out. That's what it used to look like. We're gonna go from this point. This is... Uh, the buckle that is on the leg loop. And then we put this big soft shackle as uh, the connection for the back of the thigh. And we're just gonna see if it breaks here or if it breaks the buckle is my guess. Buckle held and strap lost. That is what we got. Does the buckle still work? Yep. No. Oh. Nice. That webbing, I bet, is breaking 50% of what it could break out if it was new. Mm -hmm. It's not a sharp bend radius, obviously, but I think they're both shaped like that. Yeah. But you can see where they're really starting to wear through. Yeah. And I bet that the, is the issue. The other one looked just like it. Okay, here's the other leg loop. And you can see that this thing is 25% cut through from his wear and tear. And so we're going to put that right on there and we're going to pull like this, even though it's kind of even pulling even worse. And we're clipping the ring in the back just to see if something happens interesting on this side. Oh, that was low. It sounded low. That was very low. Oh, you called it. You said five before five. we did it. Yep. I mean, five's still stronger than you in theory need it, 
Oh, this is MBS 23 kilonewtons. Yeah, I mean, it broke. Shocker. Any damage on the backside? Nothing. Nothing? Doesn't seem like much. Yeah, these are all pretty nice, beefy attachment ring points. Like, that's pretty cool. We're gonna add those aluminum rings to this little pile. Right here, we have some welded steel rings. We have a titanium ring from Titan Climbing. Two titanium rings. Some rolled aluminum repel rings. And then we have a, like a forged or CNC'd aluminum. And then this was a well-used rolled aluminum one. And so I'm gonna see what that breaks at from the harness. And we're gonna break all these in another video. So you should subscribe. Our next configuration is a soft shackle between these two rings and this ring back here. And I'm assuming a soft good is going to break before those rings. Looks like two versus one. Oh, where's the one? So the ring is still here. It doesn't seem to be deformed. Back here, the stitching is what broke. Seems plenty good enough. Did you know the MBS of a harness is two guys trying to harvest the rings off of it? <laughs> so we cut it up too bad to break the waist belt, but it's uh, pretty much the same straps on the whole thing that keep breaking but we're actually now gonna break a little bit of the hardware that goes with it now. So we're gonna test this buckle. This is intended to not come undone when there's pressure on it. Click. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Ah, it's rated for 15. Nice. It didn't break this part. It broke here. Oh. Yeah, the pin that holds the, the locking mechanism blew out the sides of that. Yep. And that's what that side looks like. Yep. These are the, the Cobra buckles made by the same company that makes the Purims. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Austria Alpen and the Rondo uh, carabiners. Gotcha. And you carry all that stuff? I do. Cool. Let's see what this breaks at. Oh, it just it just rammed right through that metal. Yep. Sweet. So, MBS is 23 kilonewtons. Pretty good for a well-used unit. All right, let's see what happens when you pull it sideways. That's 960 frames per second, by the way. So that's some pretty fast snapping. Oh. How did it? Yeah, I'm... What? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, all right. I thought we magic happened. Ah, imagine that. What it's rated for.